Hello and welcome to this video on nodal analysis. In some of our previous videos we've looked at the basic principles of mesh analysis and in this video we're going to move on to a very similar kind of analysis called nodal analysis and we're going to see a very basic introduction in this video to nodal analysis and in later videos we'll also look at some worked examples as well. So first of all, it's important to note that mesh analysis and nodal analysis are similar in several ways. Both of them involve first determining a system of equations. Both of them require these systems of equations to be solved by methods such as simultaneous equations, Kramer's rule, the inverse matrix or otherwise. We've seen some of these in our previous videos on mesh analysis as well. Where mesh and nodal analysis differ is that mesh analysis is concerned with finding currents or mesh currents, whereas nodal analysis is primarily occupied with finding voltages at various points in the circuit which we call nodes. So let's take a look at an example. In this circuit there are a few things apparent. First of all we've marked some nodes on this circuit. A node is a point where any components are connected and so in this particular example we have a total of four nodes. Of these four nodes one of these must be defined as what we call a reference node and our objective will be to calculate the voltages of the other nodes relative to this reference node. In this particular example it's made easier since we see that this node at the bottom is connected to ground and so we'll define this node as our reference node and we do this by giving it the number 0 and so this means that the other nodes are numbered 1, 2 and 3 and these voltages are the unknown voltages so we started with four nodes but now really we only have three nodes or three unknowns because we're beginning with the assumption that our reference node is at 0 volts one other thing to notice is that in our examples we'll see these constant current sources rather than the constant voltage sources that we saw when we looked at mesh analysis. So we mentioned earlier that we're going to produce a system of equations for this circuit and the idea is to produce an equation for each of our unknown nodes 1, 2 and 3. So we're going to end up with a system of three equations and this video will be about how we set up these equations. Uh, we'll look at how we can solve them in later videos, but we're more concerned about how we set up these equations correctly uh, to begin with. We're going to follow these steps. Don't worry if they don't make sense to begin with. We'll see it put into practice in a moment, but here are the steps that we're going to follow. Firstly, identify any current sources either directly entering or directly leaving a given node. Second, by Ohm's law, we set this current as being equal to V over R, where V is that node's unknown voltage, and R consists of any resistances in direct contact with that node. We'll make this clearer in just a moment. Third, subtract from this any paths which lead directly to another node. Again, we'll express this in the form V over R. So we're seeing this, this Ohm's law uh, formulation, I equals V over R, uh, used in this, in this particular method. Fourth and lastly, we're going to repeat this for all of our unknown node voltages. Okay, so this probably all seems a bit confusing at first glance. Uh, but let's hopefully make it, a, make it make a little bit more sense when we put this into practice with our circuit here. So let's take node 1 as an example. We're going to start by producing an equation for this node here. So we're looking to set up an equation kind of like in the form of, of Ohm's law, I equals V over R. And node 1 we can see is directly fed by this current source here, I1. I1 is flowing towards or into that node and I'm only interested in current sources that are directly connected to that node so I2 all the way over here I2 doesn't count for this particular uh, node that we're that we're handling at the moment 
When it comes to the V over R part of our equation, the voltage of our node, we don't know. So we're just going to call it V1, uh, the voltage at node 1. And for the resistance R, we're told in those steps to only consider those resistances that are directly connected or in direct contact with that node. So in our case here, uh, where well, we have R1 directly connected to this node, and R4 here we have directly connected to this node. Now, one important point to make here is that we're not going to say that this R term is going to be R1 plus R4. Uh, the easiest way to think about this is to remember that this node here is our sort of point of reference for this equation. And so these two resistors, starting from this point, as it were, they're not in series. Um, they're in parallel. We can go this way from the node or we can go this way. And so we're not going to say R1 plus R4. We're going to say that the resistance is R1 in parallel with R4. And I'm just using this, this shorthand notation here for parallel resistors, just for the sake of simplicity. But hopefully we know that, I'll, I'll just make a little note on the side here, we can say that R1 in parallel with R4 is the same as uh, 1 over the inverse of R1 plus the inverse of R4. Or we could, uh, we could write that same thing like this. Anyway, we're not quite finished. Um, we're on the we're on to step three of our steps uh, from previously, and step three says uh, to subtract any paths which lead us directly to another node. Again, expressed in the form of V over R. So, what do we mean by that? Well, let's take a look at our diagram. Remember, we're at node one here. Uh, this is where we're building our equation. And are there any other paths? which take us directly to another node. Well, yes, we can go from node 1 to node 2 via this resistor here, R1. And so again, we're going to express this in terms of V over R. So the voltage of this node that we're traveling to, node 2, we'll call V2. And we're going to this node via the resistor R1. And so we're going to subtract, again, we're subtracting these, um, V2 over R1, as, it, as though it was the case that we're going to V2 via R1, as it were. Okay, are there any other paths that take us away from our node 1 to any other unknown node? Well, yes, we're connected to node 3 via this resistor R4. And so we're going to do similar here. Uh, we're going to subtract again this time V3 over R4. We're going from node 1 to V to V3, the node 3 here, and that's via this resistor R4. Uh, so minus V3 over R4 there. So now we've finished our first equation. Uh, the bad news is that we have two more to do, but hopefully we're getting the hang of it now. Let's take a look at this second node here. Again, we're starting with this uh, Ohm's law formulation of I equals V over R. So are there any current sources directly connected to this node? Well, there aren't any in this case, and so we have zero for current. And again, this is set equal to V over R, or something in the form of V over R, where in our case the voltage of this node is V2, and the resistances directly connected to this node are going to be R1, R2 and R3. Again, these are all uh, to be thought of as being in parallel from the, the starting point of this node, as it were. And so we'll use that shorthand again. Again, we need to subtract those resistive paths that take us directly to another node. So we're subtracting V1 over R1 because we can go from, we're starting at node 2 now, we can go from node 2 to node 1 via this resistor R1, and we're subtracting V3 over R2 um, because we can go to node 3 via this resistor R2. Just one quick side point here. What I've not said is that we can go to node 0 via R3, and that's just for simplicity's sake, really. We could be correct and say 
that we can subtract what we'll call V0 over R3. But remember what we said at the start, zero is our reference node, which we're, we're setting or defining as at zero volts. And so V0 over R3 will be zero over R3, which would just be zero. And so we're, we're really wasting our time by subtracting this path down to the reference node. And so we don't include it in our formulation. There's our second equation complete, but it's a good habit to get into. And uh, this is something we mentioned in our video on mesh analysis as well, is to keep these terms in a consistent order. So we saw that in the first equation, it was in order of V1, V2, V3. These terms are in sort of numerical order. And it's a good idea to rearrange our second equation here so it's in that order too. And so we'll have something that looks like this. Okay, so for the last equation now, this is node 3. Again, remembering we're starting with this formulation of I equals V over R. And so for the current I in this case, do we have any currents directly connected to node 3? Well, yes, we have this current I2. Let's just notice the direction of this current. It's flowing away from node 3. Current is flowing out from this node, as it were. And so we've got to reflect that by writing this as a negative number. So currents flowing towards or into a node, like was the case over here, uh, I1 flowing into node 1, is going to be a positive number, positive current. And currents flowing out from a node or away from the node, like node 3, we're given these as negative currents. So here we have uh, negative I2. When it comes to the V over R part, let's, let's do this one in order, in numerical order to begin with, so that we don't have to rearrange it uh, like we did with the last one. So let's start with the V1 term. Well, we're at node 3. For this equation and so the v1 term will be negative it's it's going to be the the subtraction of whatever takes us away from node 3 to node 1 and in this case it's this path via the resistor r4 and so we have minus v1 over r4 v2 are there any direct connections taking us from node 3 to node 2 well we have this resistor here r2 and so again we're subtracting V2 over R2. Lastly, we're looking at V3, and V3 is the node that we're looking at as well. We're looking at node 3, and so this is going to be a, a positive term. It's V3 divided by whatever uh, resistors are connected directly to this node. And again, these are in parallel in this case, and we have uh, R2 and R4 here connected to node 3, and so we have plus V3 over these two resistors in parallel. So now we have these three simultaneous equations. And obviously, for this example, we don't have circuit values. We just talked about things in terms of R1s and R2s and so forth. We're going to leave this video here. But in our next videos, we're going to apply this same method of uh, setting up these equations to some worked examples. And we'll also explore how we can solve these equations to find the values of these voltages V1, V2, and V3.